have you guys sort of always been in fashion? Uh, we've always loved fashion, haven't we? It's yeah. always been important to us, I think, even when we were really little. But in terms of being in fashion... We've never, never been in fashion, loved it for years, but it's never been... We've never done it professionally, ever. I think because we've always loved fashion, both Jess and I, we've got such different styles. Yeah. Um, and I think our friendship together, we've been friends for like... Well, since, the age, since the age of five? Yeah, about 1997. That makes a, a sound. long time ago. So <laughs> old, I can't even cope. <laughs> yeah, it's a long, long time ago. But I mean, we even when we look back at old photos, we're matching our outfits and just like silly things like that. We've always, always loved it. And I suppose I worked for Topshop, I mean, at, at retail, and you did Hollister for a while. Jack Wills, yeah. Uh, Jack Wills. So, you know, we've always liked it and it's always been important. But in terms of actually being in the industry, no, not really. Not really something that we thought about before how did how did this come about then if you've never worked in fashion how did this well, come about thank you for asking <laughs> so um me and jess we've always wanted to do something together when we were younger five years old 1997 out us out like that yeah, um <laughs> we we've always wanted to do something together whether it was going to Go on, say it. Making a band. We tried to sing. It didn't work. We tried. We did have a band. We we tried many, many different things. Uh, Obviously, we were a lot younger. Um, and Britney Spears impersonated. Yeah, we tried. We tried a lot of things. We we're very, very close. So we always wanted to work together. We always wanted to work together, but we didn't know what it was going to be. And I think fashion just seemed the the kind of obvious choice. It just was what kind of happened naturally it ha- yeah it happened really naturally and when you had just finished university yeah I finished university late so I did uh one degree well not I haven't got two degrees so I mean the sound as if I've done my first degree no <laughs> I did a degree which wasn't the right degree so I left halfway through and then I started again so I didn't graduate till I was 25 um and then I was kind of a bit like I'm not really sure what I want to do applied for a few different jobs interviews and stuff kind of more like social media based just because that seemed like the, a kind of good industry to get involved with because it hadn't really become as serious and as quite just yet it was yeah. kind of on the cusp of becoming that so it kind of seemed like the right thing to get involved with and then pop and i were buying loads of bits internationally and it was costing us a small fortune we were shopping online a lot yeah and like you know places um, like australia um there's really nice swimwear brands so we were getting bits from there we were getting bits from america and we were always doing it together to try and save a bit of money in terms of import costs and shipping, shipping costs it takes it's so so expensive and by the time that you get something you've ordered it online it'll tell you a price but then you'll get a customs bill come through yeah and it's sometimes almost double what you've, you've bought. bought. And you think, oh, I'm getting a, a you know, a, a bikini for £40. Yeah, but you'll yeah, be spending £100 on, the, pounds yeah. on the shipping, the customs. And you yeah. won't have even really thought about that. And then if it's the wrong size. You don't send it back because it's going to be so, so much more expensive. So it kind of just seemed to be yeah. something I thought. Um, and the brands are so nice. And, you know. The we quality were, is so good. Yeah. And we were seeing them on Instagram. They were coming up for us as ads and whatever else. And we were following them and we loved them. And there just wasn't really any of those things available to us here um, okay. in, in the same way. So it just kind of naturally happened. And, and you were working at the time, weren't you? Yeah. So I've been in car sales for years, since I was 17. So I'm now 28. <laughs> for a long time. Um, and I did years and years of car sales. And obviously you me and Jess. Very good at it. I, used I was to, very, very good at car sales. I used to go in and see her because obviously being a uni student, I had my Some time to myself. Yeah, free <laughs> time, yeah. I had manage myself. And so I would go in and like take her a coffee and she was always like, flat out and I'd be, I was Jess at the window like pop I'm like oh, Porsche you know you yeah, know big I, customers and Jess is there like got your coffee pot I'm like okay cool thanks, thanks so did yeah. that for a really long time I was at four years at Porsche in Sully Hole and Jess said to me one day I think it was like March time and we've, we've been talking about this kind of idea for a, for maybe six or seven months yeah, something like that. Had, I suppose it was one of we kind of maybe put it down to one of those other ideas that we had that maybe one day we'll do yeah or just something not silly but like we just th- didn't think it would ever kind of become Actually, a reality yeah we thought it was more of like a big dream that like one day when we're older we were like we are older yeah, yeah. we're older now <laughs> we're older now we should we, probably we do something thought maybe i mean we might still do this like a dog sanctuary i don't oh. know we thought we'll have some business together at some point in our life yeah doing it but yeah so it, so yeah jess said to me in i think it was march time like you know we should actually why don't we just do it like why not give it 
a girl. Like we were 25 at the time. And yeah, and I just applied for another role. Yeah. Got down to the final two. And then they were like, sorry, you don't have any experience. Yeah. So I was kind of in that catch 22 of, okay, well, I've gone and got my degree to then get a job at a certain level to then be able to get the experience and obviously yeah. build and start a career. And that just wasn't really happening for me. And I mean, not that I interviewed loads and loads and loads. I think I probably did about four and I was like, right, forget <laughs> this because this isn't getting me anywhere. And then part was, that you know, you, you were kind of at a point where you're like, do I want to be in car sales Yeah, forever? I've been there a long time. You were at that tipping point of whether that was going to be your... About seven years in car sales. Um, and it's a difficult one to kind of get out of. The industry is really small. And there's lots of people that kind of move about in the car industry. And when Jess said to me, just why don't, do why don't we just do it? Like, why don't you quit your job? And I was like, Jess, I earn a lot of money. I do really well for myself. I'm really, I, I feel like, I, don't I'm, know how I, I feel convinced. successful in that area. And yeah, I was going to say, Fools, yeah, that's, that's a risk, isn't it? Like, that's a risk to lose a job, that you, to get out of a job you've been in for, like, that long. She to... loves me a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love I love cars. I'm really passionate about cars. And so for years and years, that was my career. And I handed my notice in. I didn't realise what date it was, but I handed it in, like, April the 1st. Um, and my manager was like, ah, lol, okay, like, go back to your work. I was like, he was like, April Fool's Day. And I was like, no, no, um... I really, really want to go and I'm going to do it. And he said to me, you're going to go to another dealership. And I said, no, um, I'm going to start up my own business. And he was really proud of me because he said, if it was... That weird girl, Jess, that comes in. Yeah, that weird girl, Jess, who comes in in pajamas, I'm going to start up business with her. Um, And I think we we started looking and started um, really taking it quite seriously when I was like, Jess, I've not got any money now. (laughs) I'm taking it seriously because you've made me do this now. Um, and we started yeah. researching the brands. We started reaching out to the ones that we thought were going to be really good. We got some samples in from them and see what their quality was like. Yeah. Um, and then it happened in, in I think, in New York. We went to New York. We went to a fitness and fashion trade show. Yeah. And um, which was really lucky that we actually because we were we were getting a few uh, samples from brands and things, but it was taking quite a while, you know, to, to hear even from them. get them. And if they were really interested, you can't really tell over email. And yeah. We can't really, you know, showcase what we want to do and what we are. And when we went to New York, um, we found this kind of trade show uh, with lots and lots of different activewear brands. Um, and obviously so excited to be able to go to New York. That was I think it was more prestigious than what we kind of anticipated it to yeah. be. Like we were thinking it's going to be like just a big room with different brands. Like this was like Good Americans there, Khloe Kardashian's brand. Like there's big, big brands. Yeah, so just huge. little me and Jess walking in from Stratford upon Avon, you know, <laughs> and the, the home of Shaka Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> And we didn't even have a website at this point. We no. just had kind of like a mock-up version. We'd had we'd made we'd be. made business cards with our names yeah. on. Yeah. And we'd created this name, a sandler, um, which, which is, took the longest. Took the longest time. But it that it's, was the longest. It's a Latin girl's name for uh, like it means confidence and strength. it means strength. Like all these lovely kind of things and connotations that which go is along what with we it. Kind of want our brand yeah. So. so Poppy, right before you quit. How much stuff had you had in place, like before you went and handed your notice in? How much oh, stuff so had you done? Yeah, so I want completely, complete honesty. We'd been chatting about it in quite a lot of depth. We'd been speaking about like this is what we're going to do. Like we we, we, we had the idea. We had the idea. The idea was, good. and we'd sat down with your mum and dad yeah. and chatted it through with my mum and dad and said, "This is kind of our um, this is kind of our plan." My mum and dad have been successful business. So have your mum and dad, and we kind of wanted to gauge their opinion, not just jump into it and be like, yeah. "Oh, let's just see what happens." Let's we'd, just let's just we done I'll a quit your job. Let's yeah, turn. we'd done a good amount of planning, of and we yeah, we'd spoken to the brands and we'd got a good idea as to how it was going to work. But we just needed to. We just thought if we don't take a chance and we don't go to New York and we don't see what happens, we won't know. Yeah. So, and also, I suppose it was a gap in the market at that time. Yeah. And massively. somebody else will fill it if we don't. Yeah. So you know, in that respect, we thought let's get on with it, and, yeah. and it's kind of now or never because the older we're going to get, the more reasons we're going to have not to, not do, to do it, it yeah. do it, and not to, to take that chance. Yeah. So. Yeah, it kind of. I think, I think that's New York I think, was the pinnacle, really, where yeah. the reality of what we were doing. I mean, obviously, for you, a bit more because you'd left your job. Yeah. Where for me, I think it was more New York because one, we're in New York on our own, trying to find our way around the place, which was 
hilarious. We spent we, two weeks there. Yeah, and right. it was it's just the best place and we absolutely love it and when we get to go back it's so exciting and you know obviously pitching to these brands you know my dad is quite a realist he said look if you get none of them that are actually interested don't worry about it just come you know yeah go, it's great experience get out there you know talk to them and see what happens and it was a great feeling to kind of call him and we had nine brands that wanted to work with us so I think it was like that was a good moment when we <laughs> called uh, my dad and said oh, he's like, oh, like well well and we were like we've got nine he was like what he's like blowing out how the hell have you done that was just, what was it like like the, you know the actual pitching to brands how does that happen like did you just send them an email and say hey yeah so we sent them a we sent them an email and talked about our brand obviously we have no website yet we yeah. only had. We had kind of like a drafted, we had like um, almost like Pinterest kind of inspiration imagery of, yeah. kind of what we wanted. And as well we'd at spoken that point. to them about, you know, we're going to be bringing something really exciting for the UK market. We're going to be helping. Our pitch to them was, if you want to be more accessible in the UK, it we really are does. we are now going to be the most exciting thing, the most upcoming, um, upcoming thing, upcoming, <laughs> upcoming thing for the UK. And so when we spoke to the brands, they were quite excited because it was something completely new, new to them. them yeah. There's no other, the there's UK no one wasn't really tapped. They yeah. Done they, and a lot of the brands were international, but they weren't really selling to the UK as much. So for them, they were thinking it's as much an advantage for them it as is, it was so. for, for us. And I think because we are our key customer, like we, yeah. we, and not, and we've actually we really know along our, the way yeah. that the demographics much, much larger than just our kind of age. But yeah. initially we were going there to, provide a certain you know a service uh you know bring these products for our age group and our kind of demographic so yeah. we we were telling them that saying you know we know the customer better than you do because we are the customer yeah we know that we want these products that you can't we can't get easily from you because we know how expensive it is. And then if we've ordered the wrong size or, you know, a lot of the time you want to order two sizes. You want to make sure that you've got the right size or girl to, sizes. Yeah, I can't weird. even get it's into, not, you know, we've, I've probably got every single size yeah. in my wardrobe and they all fit me. You know, yeah. it doesn't, and I think it makes sense. that whole sizing thing, especially for women, it is like, because we're different size in different areas, yeah. your boobs, your bum, your stomach, we're all different sizes. It's, it all works differently. And I remember saying to my boyfriend, he was like, you know, what size do you wear? And I was like, well, depends on the material. It depends on the top because I could be a 10 or I could be a 12, like, yeah. or I could be a size eight I've when it's size some, 22 jumpers. It makes Tesco, no very sense. Nicely, actually, so. Yeah. It's so, it's so, so yeah. weird. So when we started looking at, um, <laughs> when we started looking at the brands, we need to make sure that it was so size inclusive. Definitely. But not only just being size inclusive, it makes you feel really good when you wear it. There's so many times where we've gone to the gym and you'll see a girl on the treadmill and it's obviously her first time at the gym and it's so daunting and she's got like these see-through leggings on. The lights in the gym uh, are, are vicious. so vicious, vicious. to any lump, um, like, you know, if you've just got like a problem area, and also yeah. it's on the January, treadmill, it's, it's, all all, moving, it's all moving around, as you're moving. you want to feel in and together and just tight and right tight and, and right and and feel but nice. feel good so when we looked at the brands we, we wanted, wanted to make sure that was there it had to be right and it had to be really high quality and something that brands because there are some good gym brands out there in the uk you know gym sharks a great example like they're brilliant i wore gym shark for, for years, years yeah years. For years so you know in the sense of it had to be the right quality it to a point where it was we are more kind of competing with people like lululemon who are obviously a u.s brand but yeah you know that kind of level and you know the brands that you can get on their supporter like that was quite a big inspiration for us in terms of you know another brand because they bring in such high quality pieces mm. that are more kind of an investment not that i'd obviously you know their stuff is is really expensive but we wanted to kind of find that middle ground of okay jim shark are you know an affordable price point lulu's are quite expensive the net supporter are you know an investment mm. piece where can we kind of sit where you know our age range can afford it younger can afford it and obviously older can afford yeah. it so it was more it about it accessible the, to everybody yeah the products had to be really really long lasting not fast fashion yeah. The products had to be really durable. They had to be something that you could wash and wash and wash. You're in the gym, you're putting your leggings back on for the next day. Yeah. You've washed them, you want to put them back on yeah. and, and wear... And if you want to be able to go into town and have a coffee yeah. and, or whatever, run errands, whatever you want to do after the gym. 
And I found with the Gymshark ones, I felt very much like I'm in my gym gear. Yeah. Where, you know, a lot of our ones are very much like it could be, we can put them with a shirt, we can put them, you know, with a crop jumper, you can obviously wear them to the gym, you can yeah, style it's kind them of in that. so many different ways, which again, that versatility, being a bit more expensive, it, it has to, you know, have more than just one function, I think. And yeah. that's something that was important to us as well, kind of accessibility. How do you then pick, like, the brands you want? Because I suppose if you've gone you gone and got these offers, how did you handpick, like, okay, is it off what you would wear, basically? Or how did yeah, you... Um, it's, it's a bit... I think it's a bit of everything. Yeah. Our styles are completely... the same, same, but... We like, we like, yeah, <laughs> we, we're, we're really weird. Like we're a bit yin and yang. And I think that yeah. works like with salt and pepper. I like one thing, you're like nothing, but it will be, but both of them go together really nicely. Really nice, so yeah. from both of us, rather than just one person being one business and looking at just what they would want, a bit more like it's a bit more diverse yeah. and that we can both find things that for different people yeah, would we work. Have kind of, we, we both have different body shapes. So in that yeah. sense as well, what works for our body shapes just between us two are different. Yeah. Uh, let alone, you know, like our friends, you know, our mums, like all these things. So yeah. We kind of try to bring everything together. And we're at this trade show in New York. They obviously had all their products out. So, you know, we could go and feel them, touch them, see, see girls in them, you know, and have a really good idea of what we are bringing over rather than just obviously over the internet internet. yeah we weren't we weren't kind of going to trade show and just thinking like oh i like that we'll get that it had to be durable it had to be really really soft it had to be completely opaque if you've got leggings that just you stretch them and then you can see your bum i know boys probably actually are probably like you shouldn't have done that (laughs) (laughs) you should have kept them see through um but that was the worst of being at the gym and then would come over and I'd be like Jess you've got your bum out what are you doing and then I've just done my exercise (laughs) and I'm thinking good Oh, it's okay. Been here an hour. <laughs> okay, so after after New York, what was what came next? Then so you've got these these offers. What came what came next after that? Yeah, so a lot of math came next. Yeah, lots bit... and lots of math. Yeah, so yeah, we had to great. we had to work out. Obviously, we had to put into um, if you were buying normally. Obviously, you've got to put the shipping and the customs fees afterwards. We then had to make sure that how much we were buying. We had to work out the weight of it. We had to work out how much the customs fees would be, the import fees. So and then the, work out what our retail price was going to be, but also the what we were going to offer them at their wholesale price because we obviously had to make sure we were making enough in order for this to even work. Yeah, yeah. Um, Getting the website the, sorted. Yeah, the, website. the website was a difficult one because obviously we're putting our trust into somebody else because it's something that we don't, we know a lot more now, but when we first started, you know, I'd probably say that was our biggest kind of struggle in the sense of, trusting people with our website you know people coming up to saying about seo facebook marketing i think it's hard to experts yeah experts that kind of were like let us help you and actually we found for the first six months they weren't really helping us i think we learned a lot about just trusting our gut with it yeah um and knowing that our vision together we both know exactly like our minds are really in sync like and we will finish the sentences all the time and we just we both knew exactly what this website was going to look like yeah like we didn't have to say it we'd be like yeah 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 (laughs) and we really put a lot of trust into getting our our packaging was a big thing it had to be recyclable it had to be kind to the environment we wanted to keep it as low um and as low as a carbon footprint as we possibly could and be we wanted to start that from the beginning rather than okay. get into... Try and implement it later on. Yeah. Um, it's so, just... And luckily, you know, you're one of your customers from Porsche. It's actually something that he does. Yeah. So we were yeah. able to use that connection in, okay. in that sense and go and see him. Lots of good yeah. business contacts. Yeah. So that was really, really good. And he, you know, he helped us and kind of said, look, what are you looking for? And it's, you know, in terms of packaging, like who knew you could get so many different types of packaging? <laughs> like it was crazy. So he definitely helped us with that. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, especially the first year was very much a big learning curve and at the start definitely I imagine, because yeah. i think you're we've got all these ideas and we've got to then put it into now it's a business it's not mm. just me and jess having an idea about yeah. something we're actually doing it and we've got to communicate it to somebody else who effectively and then magically know what we're thinking in our yeah. heads where normally obviously we're just talking about it and we can see it where getting that across i think so initially was much harder where mm. now and I think also we didn't really want to offend anybody especially when people are doing the website for us and stuff you know oh, yeah. initially you're a bit 
oh and we're now we're a bit more like no 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 no, no it needs to thank you I but think no, we've it become needs to be like this. we've become a bit more assertive with it yeah. and I think that comes with just experience and just well, experience yeah it, yeah it's yours yeah is it, is it was it difficult then like you're not you're saying about like your website was it difficult showing someone else your vision like you were saying yeah you two yeah. both were in sync in terms of we want this is it difficult then putting it to the other people who are who are going to be building stuff for you and everyone's got their own interpretation of what you're saying. So. Yeah, I think the perception of what we were trying to do was so different to actually what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I kind of drafted up a website. Yeah. We're very, very, very lucky because Pop's ability with all this tech stuff is ridiculous. And I'm saying tech stuff <laughs> like I sound like an 80-year-old woman. <laughs> honestly, I can no, work I mean, Instagram is what Jess means. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, like, it, and I'd say, we, we'd be talking about it and Pop would also just show me this thing she's done on this app called Ova or Canva or whatever. Yeah. And I'm looking like, that's exactly it, where yeah. I think that's, but I'll know. Grace but I'll know what you mean, yeah. and I'll be like, right, this is what it is, and then there it is. So, so that's massively helped and sped the process up. With things. I think, yeah, a lot of the time we'll we'll draft it together and we'll show something it. But at the very beginning, we didn't know that we had to do that. We just thought, yeah, yeah. when you go and to the website designer, the apps as well to even yeah, do that on. Yeah, so even just something as as small as that. Just but it's right. it's all experience. I think at the very beginning, so you're so like, oh my god, well what which bits do I pick from and what do I show and people? where and do you start? Yeah, it's it's massively a massive learning curve. And then later on as years go by and you've got experience and you kind of know it's so much easier to pitch things mm. because you know it off by heart. At the beginning, it's obviously it's brand new. Yeah, and I think... And also, also it's it's a made-up idea that we've yeah, come up with. Yeah. So it seems a bit mad. We're like, are we pitching yeah. that's just made up? But that's all businesses. Every business is made up. I think also at the start, it's good to do things like trial by error because yeah. like... I remember at the start, like you were saying, I was, I was quite shy at stuff, like you know, because you're kind of like, oh, I'm starting. Don't I don't, know. I don't want to, offend, I don't want to offend people. I've got to be nice. Then, like, yeah, yeah. like year two, year three, I'm more assertive. Okay, no, I want it done this yeah. way. I want that done this it way. So, done like that. Yeah, and yeah. Then, but then that comes like through experience. Like I tried, I failed at things, switch things, you yeah. know, switch things. Yeah, out. I, I think, think also that failing at things was quite daunting to start with. And you know, if we said, oh, we want it to look like this, and yeah. it did look like that, and we didn't like it. We almost thought, well, that's our fault because oh, no, yeah. we've, we've got it wrong. We're actually, it's fine that it didn't look how we wanted it to. Or actually, we've changed our mind. We and, and that growth of the business, you know, the very first website we had looks nothing like our oh, website no. now. Our website looks completely different. Still the same principle, you know, that kind of like the Ascender, like nude aesthetic and, you know, very clean, very, you know, easy to kind of navigate. But yeah you know, in the terms of actually the function of the website and, and what it looks like, it's a completely different website. But I think I know I was at the start, if we got it wrong, oh God, like, you know, we don't know what we're doing. Or yeah. That, that would be I think, a worry to start. I with. think it's we're more, now, it's more nice. the fact that you, me and Jess, like, it feels like if you put something out there to everyone, and I feel like everyone would probably feel like this, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube mm. or whatever, you've put something out there for people to then criticize or scrutinize whatever you've done. And I feel like if something fails and you've given it your all and you've put your confidence into it and someone's like, oh, your website's a bit crap. Like, who did that? And you think it's almost like a bit of a setback. You think, oh, no, it didn't work. Whereas actually, you've got to think... Got to take everyone's criticism, pick out the bits that you yeah, think are useful. Definitely. And use it to an advantage and actually develop your business further. And I think that's something that we learn quite quickly. Yeah. That actually There was a huge amount of growth to- in the first year, a massive amount of growth. It was like we sat, I remember genuinely, I remember sitting, we launched our website in, so we, we went to New York in October. We ended up, we had so much time to research and get all the brands and get everything shipped over. And on December the 1st, we went live with our website. And I genuinely remember we bought this warehouse. Um, which, sorry, we rented a warehouse, which was, wow. which was too big. And we just thought... We jumped in, to say we jumped in with both feet. In terms our warehouse. Of the, of stock, the warehouse. You know, getting people to help us with website, getting people to help us with SEO, Facebook marketing. It, no, I mean, no wonder really we felt overwhelmed. It was. It, it <laughs> I mean, our our, our warehouse is probably the same size as this house. It was huge. I mean, really? it was quite fun because we got these little things. They're called like bogies, aren't they? Yeah, they're like mini skateboards that you put all the boxes on to so scoot around. Scoot down Me and the Jess, whole I think we, and we were so overwhelmed that we just thought, no, we want to be, we want to be as big as, we want to be as big as Selfridges. Like, let's go for it. Yeah. So it's a huge warehouse. We're sat there. We've got our Starbucks. We're sitting there mm-hmm. waiting for the website to go live, thinking it's just going to flood with, with, with orders. Of course, 
that's not what happened. No, of course I not. think it was one of our good friends yeah. was the first person to put an order through. And we were like, that's so wonderful that she yeah. even bought it. And I think yeah. it, the leggings were £75. I remember at the time they were £75, which is a lot of money to a lot of people. Yeah. And rightly so. And she really trusts us and she wears them like still to this day Such all a, the yeah. time and they have not faded. Yeah. Um, but it took a really long time for orders to come in. Mm-hmm. And it was things like we had to put our trust into SEO yeah. for our website. We had to put our trust into people for marketing and advertising. And to be completely frank, none of that works. No, not so and really. we invested a lot of money into it, into yeah. SEO. It, it was Genuinely, it was thousands. Yeah, which was, and it's a shame because I, I think it was also, you know, it was naive for us to think that, and it would just, and also, it would just work. It, it takes a lot of investment, obviously, for something to come back. But at the same time, being a, being a new business, yeah. we also, you know, there, there was maybe more cost-effective ways to, to do it to do that. Um, I think also it's like people have got to start to understand your business and put trust into it first mm -hmm. before they buy from you. They're not just going to buy from you straight away. They want to make sure that the brand is real, that it's personable, that they've got a good idea as to what things are coming from your business. There's so many factors that you've got to look. It's like, you know, when you go on any, any website and you think, cool, it's credible and okay, great. They've got good reviews and they've got great quality products. There's so many things that you look into before you even buy something. So we kind of thought straight away, we'll just press live and people will flood yeah. in. And I think also we were so trying to compete with straight off the bat with somebody like Nest Porter or Selfridges, which actually it's impossible. Yeah. It's absolutely impossible. Not that it's not what we still strive to, to become, but just in the sense of actually let's just take it back. You know, Poppy and I didn't even really want to be, you know, on the about us page in a, of a send there or no. you know, modeling any of we didn't clothes to start with because we wanted it to be to be separate and yeah, and like the, you know, people to really take the business seriously and they won't if we're involved. When actually we found the complete opposite. Yeah. It's like people really it sounds really like a bit gay. <laughs> but like people really like our story and they yeah. like the fact that we've noticed this for five and they like the fact that we picked all the clothes. Yeah. I think a lot of women kind of can really relate to it yeah. as having your best friend and starting something and we've been just going for it and they yeah. really like, and you know we've we've got such a different range of clothing obviously you know active wear but just in the sense of every body type can wear these clothes and yeah. feel good so I think that's something that they know that we really care about so they trust us and you know they know it's it's pop and Jess I like, thought what was really nice you know, they know it does and they know we're not gonna do anything for yeah. the best by them um which i think is something that we thought at the start oh my god no it'd be awful yeah. if people knew it not obviously close friends but just if strangers saw it was just two young girls trying to start a business i remember we did um, one of our first photo shoots we had to shoot all of the items oh god, and what was so fun. lovely was our friend olivia who uh, we've also known since the age of five she was so sweet and i remember her saying to us like I completely put my trust into you making... We were taking the photos. It's me and Jess yeah. with like a little camera. We I had so, like so many different like coats and jackets that on me. Yeah. Like trying to then pop, could take the images and, and she I said could give to, them another coat and swap the yeah. like style over. She said to us that she was like, I completely put my trust into you because I know you two would not have picked rubbish clothes you yeah, will have picked the highest better. quality. Yeah. You will have made... You will make us look amazing in this stuff like... She had just started, I think she'd just been modeling a couple of years. Mm. So she, I mean, she's phenomenal now. Like she looks yeah, unreal. Yeah. Olivia, shout out. <laughs> um, and she was wearing, I remember this, the blue Christie Street legging and the, I think, what was it? Was it the, Columbus, the Columbus bra. Yeah. Um, and she was like, I know that you're going to make me look like whammy. She just, yeah, she just trusted us. And I think that, that was so nice. Gave, yeah, it gave us a bit of confidence. And then we did I think that was first. the first time that someone had actually said like, I know that you girls will make me look amazing and i know yeah. that you will have looked after other girls so i completely put my trust into you we were like cool yeah okay. nice. and i think when we did our first show so we didn't do that actually until we were a year old did we and i think that's no. something would have been nice Again, to know learning earlier that these yeah. kind of shows it was it was something called spirit of christmas there. At, at the olympia uh, in london the, yeah and um if we'd have known about that sooner that would have been ideal really because it's such a great way to get your brand out there because you you and in front of customers yeah and everyone's coming to do christmas shopping and they're coming with huge suitcases 
They yeah. want to buy things. They're ready to shop. So they are brilliant for small businesses because you know people are coming to also find something different they're not just shopping the high street they're wanting to find things um and for us how many women loved it we were having queues of women and we only had like a five by five stand so it was really tiny small. like a little time we could barely just sit in there Me and Pop would have to kind of you know with our clothes turn, and like. we would create the biggest crowd we would have girls going to the change room and coming out and wearing it, and there'd be so and many women just looking and being like I want what she's wearing and I think for us because we're only online you can't touch and feel and stretch you don't get the, the feedback clothes. in the same way either no so when c- customers are coming out they look unreal mm. plus there's other women that are queuing to get our stuff at the yeah, end of it, was it ridiculous. we oh, barely I, took yeah. i think we barely took like one box home we went there with maybe 12 or 13 big boxes of clothing we barely came home with like one it which was, was our first big show it was and i think for us it just gave us that confidence that okay we are actually we we're are, right we're doing we're right. doing well yeah, <laughs> doing well. yeah we, we, we did it we did this, <laughs> and i think Massive confidence yeah, boost because for especially us. because obviously as Pop said it took a while for the orders to come in online like the SEO wasn't working Facebook ads not working we invested all this money into it those elements for us were huge learning curves and obviously at this point we're still not heavily you know showcasing that we are the business and who we are and what we're about so at that point for us it was kind of like oh gosh I really hope. I really, really hope this this week goes well. It was <laughs> yeah. quite like a pinnacle point. Of yeah, us, I think. Because I think if I don't know, it's, it's not bad. I think it was the, more of a moment than really maybe than we thought. Yeah. And because it was so successful, you know, you talked about you guys put a lot of money into advertising. What what type of yeah. st- this at the start? What type of advertising did you put into it? And then what's the difference between then and now? Do you think? Right. So we put a lot of money into SEO. We were always told that if you're going to start a website, you need to get your SEO sorted, whether it's your keywords and and that kind of thing. So we started that probably four months before we actually launched. So we were thinking in those four months, we've got time to generate a bit of hype. Um, we're going to be posting things on Instagram. So for four months, we did that solidly. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, marketing on Facebook. It was... Yeah, so um, people reached out to us, didn't they, about saying, look, we can do your Facebook ads for you. Like, we know what we're doing. Like, we uh, and also you. influencers, I was going to say. Yeah, we sent out a couple well. of things to influencers, uh, really cool girls that we just thought we would really and relate actually, to. Yeah, quite a few influencers have been brilliant. And we've had yeah. a few bad experiences with influencers. It's a bit of a black market because... Influencers yeah. can kind of charge what they want. Yeah, and, and you don't know you, what you're going to get from it. And for for us, that's it's our money. I think I think people think that it's just like we've just got loads of money, and it just comes from a business. I don't think that I don't think influencers know that it is Jess yeah. and I's money. Yeah. It comes out of our pocket. We're giving you say two hundred pounds yeah. plus a set that we then spend our money on. I don't yeah. think they understand how important it is for them to post something that yeah, would it means a lot more than means, just when they get it from a huge brand like a uh, pretty little thing or misguided yeah. like you know for them you know the cost of those clothing like that like it's not really that big of a deal i mean they don't really appreciate that i don't think no, sometimes. a I lot think, of the girls do and a lot of the girls are have been amazing and given us great content that ex- done gone over and above what we asked for um, you know, and you try and put like a bit of a, you know, relaxed contract in place, you know, just kind of sending over like, you know, this is what we want you to do. Like, if you're happy, like, you know, please like send it back or, you know, or just say yes, that like we're happy and then, you know, kind of do that. But it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, I but. think from then until now, though, um, the difference has been we stopped our SEO. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did it for probably a year, a year and a half. Or maybe, yeah, no, yeah. maybe a year, maybe yeah, a year. Yeah. Um, there was nothing we were getting from it. And genuinely, the costs were absolutely extortionate. Yeah. Um, and we weren't receiving any orders from it. No. Thousands, I, I think over a thousand every month. Yeah. To be wow. genuinely, completely honest. Plus, we've got costs of our rent, yeah. of our unit. We've got costs of posting things out to customers. We've got costs for influencers. Yeah. We were doing um, a bit of face marketing, but it's such a... We did it, I think because we were so scarred from the SEO, we, we were did, very we quick were too scared to take to, it back off them. Yeah. And we said, look, if we don't get a result, you know, within the first month, yeah. you've got two, you've kind of got two months. And if you don't bring us anything, that's yeah. it. So what what would you suggest, like, if you could talk to yourselves when you were starting, what advertisement would you said, look, you're starting out, you only need this, this, this and this. What advertisement would you have said then? I would say massively um, getting your, um, 
getting your products in front of people, whether we could have done maybe even a small show at yeah, the very beginning. Any shows. Any shows at the very beginning to get your your products in front of customers. It sounds... It's not, uh, it's not glamorous. It's not glamorous at all, but it really helps because it also gives you so much more feedback so that you know, even if it's a, a very, very small show or it's something where you've rented a very small shop and you're getting your products in front of customers mm. because they're them telling you exactly how they feel about your store and the products you sell about us as a brand, yeah. you will genuinely get really good feedback yeah. from it. And you know kind of what to, to, to talk about or to post on Instagram. Yeah, on, you know, you on kind of advertising, know you'll, know, you'll know what to, what to say. So I would say Instagram has been huge for us. Yeah. Uh, and it's been such a good platform to promote our products on. Um, choosing shows yeah definitely going to shows choosing really good and really like really good influence like it reliable takes... girls and not necessarily the girls that have got the most followers no because a lot of them, like a lot of them micro fake. influencers are better yeah micro influencers because the really girls work. that are following these girls with the micro are all really loyal yeah and they they love those girls yeah. and they want to wear the stuff that those girls are wearing a lot more because they don't actually promote as much so yeah, what they are promoting, they believe in. Listen they to, really yeah, like. Yeah, mm. yeah so they, you know, actually, and and also they really appreciate that we're giving them the clothes. So it works really nicely together. So I'd say definitely micro influencers. Are influencers actually worth it? Because you see, like with all the big brands, like Pretty Little Thing, you, they all the, that's pretty yeah. much all they they live by. How much, yeah. you know? Based on like investment and return, is it generally worth it, or are they a lot of hit and misses? It, a lot a lot of hit misses we had one girl who is huge on instagram huge 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 and she wanted to work with us and we were like cool we sent okay. her i think at the time it was 200 pounds this was like our first year 200 pounds plus maybe three different sets mm -hmm. she took the money she took the clothes um and that was it we didn't hear from her um so and and we're one. still messaging her to this day saying, saying why like she just stole clothes and she stole money 200 pounds yeah. plus over 200 pounds worth of clothing so um a oh, lot of uh, we've had we've had other things like that happen with people that are really quite famous and you just think you just wouldn't expect it where no the micro so, so who you think i don't know i don't really know them they've been the most loyal and she's actually i mean sarah she's the yeah sarah person. calden yeah she's been amazing in terms of you know her engage like her followers are so engaged with her she's given us a huge return like every yeah. time she wears something we get sales from it. I, I think, think what's lovely really about brilliant. Sarah, like she like, genuinely wears our stuff to yeah. the gym. She genuinely loves our seamless leggings, especially the Mesa legging. And yeah. because she's, she's not always promoting it for us, she will just put a, a video up with her personal trainer in the gym. And Which you know great. that she's being genuine because she's not tagged us. She's, we didn't ask her to do it. We haven't paid her to do it. She will yeah. just be wearing them. Yeah. So we see a huge return on even just things like that, which is so lovely. We yeah. worked with her for... Well, she's a couple of, of yeah, couple of years now. Yeah, I was gonna say it, yeah. when when she posted for us originally, that's kind of when we. She was again one of those moments where we thought, are we going to keep trying to use influencers here? Yeah, this isn't worth. We went through kind of stages of just being like, works. should we? Like, should we? Is it worth it? Is it not? And we've played around with different bits who we want to use, and, and we definitely don't do it as regularly as maybe some people would have no advised. no. Definitely and I think sometimes it's nice to see different people in it. Like, well, me and Jess were. I mean, we wear our stuff all the time on our own Instagram. So when people, we'll see this in town and be like, oh, love your leggings, where they're from. We're like, assembler. <laughs> yeah. From our brand. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. Of course, we're, we're repping it. We have yeah. to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, influencers, it's a tricky one. It's a really tricky one. And I'd say Facebook advertising is brilliant if you know what you're have, doing. Yeah. If you know what you're doing or you have the right people in place. And it's something that Poppy and I are learning at the moment and maybe something that would have been good to learn Right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. I'd say to someone who's starting off a business. If you can learn that. If you can get as much help as you can with Facebook advertising, Instagram, um, obviously it's the same thing. Facebook advertising even, goes to Instagram. Even the content you post on Instagram. Though, yeah, because, learning, just yeah, learning sure more that on that. It's really, you know, the best quality you can put out there because it's something that, you know. Especially quality when, over quantity. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Definitely. I think, you know, also Facebook, it you can't just 
put an ad out and it magically reaches all the people. You, you right. also have a pixel, which is on your website, that has to build up data as well. So our pixel to start with wasn't working. There's nothing on it because it's so not there. So when we're now doing it now, we're starting again. When actually we've been going for two years and we could have been we could have loads of great information now. So I'd say having the right people around you that are helping you with these things are crucial. And trust your gut. Yeah, yeah. Because a something... few times we'd look at each other and think, do you think they really know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we kind of would like look at each other and then we'd kind of carry on. And we'd get in the car after us and we'd be like, why have we done that? What's going on? Like, that's not and right I think right. now we'd, we'd, we'd be more direct in saying, guys, it's not working it's for us. Working. I'm really sorry. We're going to have to scrap that and we're yeah. going to start again with something something else yeah, because something it's else. it's not it's not worth it and i think there's so many people unfortunately like there's emails that we get all the time from yeah, people being like we can help you with your there's a seo lot of out there which i think we've learned where you know we would never i think you know approach them like we're experts you know if we're something that we were new to yeah where a lot of people do which we didn't think maybe not you know naively didn't think would be the case so i think yeah that's something we've definitely learned the hard way but on the right tracks now so that's good <laughs> what was you know what was last year like with covid because i've i've seen a few things with a few companies where they where they've they've actually said some online brands they've thrived because obviously people are shopping online more because they're indoors they're doing the home gym thing more going for runs and things yeah. like that how has that been the case for you guys how's covid kind of affected yeah i mean so last year should covid not have happened we already had um About eight shows i think we had eight yeah eight or nine shows booked um so we were going to be doing polo in the park we were going to be doing a couple of uh, balance, we, festival, balance festival. We had um, Soul Circus booked in the Cotswolds, Spirit of Christmas. There was tons and tons of shows that we were going to be doing, which for us brings in a lot of money. And quickly, um, which yeah, is great because it means we can get fresh stock in. We can kind of, and it can something again that we wanted for our brand is that we wanted to be able to kind of have new stock in regularly and almost kind of like a sell out you know oh it's back in get creating it now. a lot of hype yeah, and then selling it out that kind of aspect to it um, so that was you know the plan so yeah within so obviously lockdown sort of happened march time and we were then getting notifications like this is a really big deal now your shows aren't going to go ahead and i think we kind of naively thought I think everyone did that it was kind of going to be over September time when we yeah. kind of came out again so we were thinking great this Christmas, Christmas let's go for yeah, it we'll be fine. but to be honest with you our sales have completely thrived through lockdown yeah so as much as this year has last year has been so like sad for a, a lot of reasons yeah. there's a lot of people that have been really poorly um I think fortunately for our business I know a lot of businesses have suffered and it's been such a weird, weird time for us because we're online, which has been great for people. People are wanting to work out at home. People are wanting new outfits. Yeah. The only thing you're doing is sitting in at home. And if you can work out and you're shopping online all the time, it's kind of like the perfect, yeah, no, it is. The perfect mash for it. So yeah. we've, done, we've done really, really well. And I think it's brought a lot of new customers to us. Yeah. Um, we were featured on the Lorraine show um, yeah. maybe three weeks yeah, back. That was very exciting. And um, that Mark, was very exciting day. yeah, Mark Hayes, he, um, we sent him a couple of bits that he wanted to show um, on the show and Lorraine held them up and was showing how stretched they are and how very, high very quality exciting. they were. And since kind of our kind of propelled success really between... Yeah. March to the end of December, that last sort of fit now, this well, the start of January has yeah. been so so good. People are wanting to get fit again after Christmas. Yeah, it's and so it's, I think it was also the fact that obviously the shows bring in the money quickly, but we yeah. what's been wonderful for us is the fact that we've had this kind of steady online flow of income yeah, from it, yeah, coming, which wasn't there before, yeah, which is what COVID's definitely brought us. I think obviously more people some of the big online. shows would bring us obviously more because there's a much larger impact of people there. Yeah. So, but in the sense of yeah, and and also with Lorraine and Mark Hayes, it was uh, an amazing opportunity that we kind of have been working on for about two years. So yeah, it, like, didn't, it didn't just happen. Yeah, I mean, well. It kind, it kind of, of no, it kind did. of, it kind of it, did, but he we called us on the Monday, and it happened well, on the Friday. Knows my mum because yeah. my mum and dad own a pub down south near Glorious Goodwood, so he goes down there and does, you know, ladies' day fashion kind of segments and stuff for Lorraine. Um, and 
he came into my mum and dad's pub because it's literally just down the road from Goodwood Racecourse. And mum and him got talking. They are, have become kind of, you know, Yeah, she and, was our best saleswoman of yeah. the year. She's she won started, it with she, flying yeah, colours. She just started showing she him. She just sold him the dream of a Sendler. Yeah. And told, I mean, she's our biggest hype woman ever. Like, yeah. she bigs us up to everyone. She wears Pop the and Jess, all the time. Pop and Jess. Yeah. Whoever, whoever will listen. She'll tell. Mum's told them. Yeah, so. if you see Sue really? in town, she will yeah. tell you all about a Sendler and how proud she is, yeah. which is lovely. And yeah. we love so, it. And in this situation, it was amazing because... All of a sudden, mum kind of said, oh, yeah, I met Mark Hayes from ITV. I went, oh, okay. All right. Didn't think anything of it. And all of a sudden, she was like, yeah, I've given you number. He's going to call you. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all of a sudden, I get this call. And it's from Mark, Mark Hayes, Hayes from ITV. ITV. <laughs> really? I asked it. I was like, hello. <laughs> and he was like, oh, Jess, Jess, hi. Hi, I met your mum. My name's Mark. I was like, yes, I know. I know. Mark, Mark Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even believe it. And, you know, he was saying about, you know, getting us on the show and, in January, the yeah. right kind of time to put to us be the show because everyone's yeah. getting back to the gym. Perfect time yeah, to, that's when he to talk about segments, yeah, and things like that. But that was actually last year, yeah. And he came and saw us at Spirit of Christmas because he lives in London, and him and Mum went shopping at the same time. And then you know, he said, you know, I'll let you know, I'll let you know, and it, and it and it and it just didn't happen because for for you know numerous different reasons, it just didn't didn't happen that time. And we kind of, I suppose, just thought, you know, let's just keep keep the connection there. One day. You know, if it can, if it can happen, amazing. And he called us on the Monday. He called my mum. He said, "Oh, is Jess around?" Anyway, come on the phone to me and says, "You know, can you get me some clothes over for for my segment on, on Friday the, on the Lorraine show?" <laughs> well, he said, "You know, for my segment on Friday." And I'm thinking, does he mean like his Instagram live, or does he mean yeah, the, like the, the actual telly? TV like, show mean, on the like, on me? you know? And I called one of the biggest TV shows. Yeah, and I called Pop said. I think we're going to be on, on telly on Friday. She went, you are? And I said, I think we might be on telly. She was like, no. And I said, well, no, I don't want to get your hopes up yet because I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, we've put I've called in. everyone by that time. <laughs> I don't care if we are or not. I've called my mum. I've called my brother. I've called all my friends. We're going to be on the line. So Jess has just told me. We we didn't know I at that point. And I said, even I didn't care. I was so excited. Amazing. Like, any, anything is yeah. going to be amazing. So Pop and I, you know, putting some bits together for him, sending out him the stuff. He said, well, can you make sure you send me an extra pair so that Lorraine can have a pair next to her? But at this point, Papa and I draw up on the floor. We're like, oh, my God, we're actually going to be on the road. He said, Lorraine, he said it. Like, you know, so we're thinking, right, it really is happening. And he called us just before. He went on. And he said, literally, now, he's in the ITV studios. He calls, he calls Jess and I and says, is it a Kendler? Or is it a Sendler? And we said, it is a Sendler. And he knows how to say a Sendler. I think he panicked. he panicked. And yeah. then, you know, we're watching, because we're watching the whole segment. And, we're and sat over there on yeah. the sofa. We're like this. <laughs> like All these different bits are happening, like the top 10 leggings. And Pop's looking at me like, you lied, didn't you? You lied, we're not on it. I was like, we're in the top 10. Like, just watch the segment. It's like, I don't know when we're going to be, I don't know what bit. He didn't say. And then all of a sudden, the last bit, the very like, last bit of the show, gets our leggings out. Well, I start screaming, and he screaming, said, screaming. "Best even... friends, Pop and Jess, Pop and Jess, Poppy and Jess, yeah, not Pop and Jess. Poppy and Jess. Poppy and Jess have created this brand of Sendler. They bring international products and leggings and gym it. wear from the US and Colombia um, and many other different countries, and they bring them to the UK with a Sendler. And Lorraine's holding our leggings. Oh, great. We've got it on the big screen behind us on ITV on the Lorraine show. We are in tears. We've got goosebumps. Yeah. We're we like must crying have it about twenty times. Yeah, we've the watched it on time, record. I didn't really listen. I kind of had a bit of blurred vision at that point because it was such a, a you know, oh my god, wouldn't that be amazing? Never yeah. thinking it was actually going to happen. Not, yeah. especially not two years into business. We're thinking, no. you know, fair enough. He needs to make sure that we're credible, credible, and yeah. you know, he's not yeah. just going to put anything on the telly. He's going to, even if it's to, to try and help. And no, it's absolutely amazing. And we had so many of our friends like messaging us because a lot of obviously our close friends knew and they're all watching it, yeah. recording yeah. it, you know, everything. But then a lot of friends who obviously didn't know were like, "Oh my god, I've just seen you!" I so know, so no. many messages yeah. that day. So um, but the amazing. orders that came from that were absolutely I don't think we expected it, and we really? still we like still that. now have got 
orders coming in from just watching Lorraine's show and yeah. pr- and and more orders from they've ordered one thing they want more because they've loved it yeah oh, so wow. that's so nice we get that it's a lot. been lovely and we've had so many comments on like these products are like these are amazing they suit me so well like I didn't know about them at first like I didn't know your brand and we've had such good feedback from it so which yeah. has made it like a little bit emotional yeah Definitely. Because it's like really, it's really nice that like you've made something and it actually works and Starting everyone loves return, it. Yeah. Something that Poppy and I made up was on the telly. And, and people, the name of it was that, and that name, we sat in my kitchen for weeks trying to come up with a name. Yeah. That, like that was one of the hardest things to come up with thinking, you know, what do we call it? Because obviously, yeah. you know, we're not going to call it Pop and Jess, are we? We're not going right. to Jess and Pop. PJ. Like, so, yeah, you know, it's going to be something, <laughs> you know. It's going to be something that's you know actually doesn't mean anything to anybody, so it can just be ours. And so for the fact that that was actually then like www.standard.co.uk yeah. yeah. across the the screen was was wild. Pretty was cool. Wild. Yeah. Before we get to the QAs, because I put through a QAs, we've had a few, but what was um what what are you got? So what are the plans for this year? And then like let's say like in the next couple of years, what have you guys got a vision where you want to take it? You know, what's what's the ideas on that? So I think this year it's it's tricky at the moment because we don't know when kind of lockdown's going to end. Yeah, which is which is hard, and it's been hard to kind of um, kind of look forward into the future and kind of know what we're going to be doing because of the time. We don't, yeah, we it, when, I mean, even this year we didn't think it was going to be as long as it was. Even last year we didn't think it was going to be as long as it was. So we kind of we paused everything, and mm-hmm. um, we've still got a lot of shows that are still kind of pre-booked at the moment for the rest of this year. So um, that actually happens. happens I mean, yeah. fingers crossed. We're going to be out of this in like April, May. Fingers crossed, and we're going to continue to start doing our shows again. Yeah, and, and I think that's kind of you know we want to really push the shows and get and get our brand out there to as many people as we can see. Yeah, um, well, we can see. Yeah, we yeah. can see that's what it says. We're going to be <laughs> reaching out. We've got we've got a lot of brands we want to look into. Yeah. Um, we hopefully want to get into swimwear as well. Yeah, there's a few brands. And thing is as well, there's a few brands that we've worn, you know, as I was saying, that we love like Australia and things that we really like and we'd love to kind of work with. And we've been in conversation with yeah. them. So that kind of connection. I think there. we've been really lucky because we've had a lot of brands reach out to us yeah. that are so internationally well known and they've wanted to work with us. So without even pitching to them, we've had so many reach out to us. And as a small business, there's just two yeah. people. There's no one else that works for Assembler. It's just me and Jess. Yeah. Um, is really nice that we've had so much interest in wanting to be a part of it. And it's nice that other international brands can see us and think, actually like what we're doing and yeah. want to be involved. So I think, you know, growing the business in the sense of the brands that we stock, you know, obviously the sense of doing more shows, obviously yeah. potential collaborations with brands, yeah. collaborations with... I was gonna, the jumper we're wearing was a collaboration jumper. Um, and we had Nicole Scherzinger, She's got this jumper and she wore it on her Instagram live and she's literally got it. So you can see a Sendler yeah. and she's got the babes put in babes. And obviously Jess and me, we designed this jumper. So yeah. Nicole Scherzinger wearing it is like that was wild. probably one of the big, another one of the one biggest of the things big that big ever ones, happened. Yeah. Um, and that kind of happened through again, something that we thought, yeah, yeah, okay, like fine. Because when we yeah. met this girl, I was actually buying a candle for mum at Spirit of Christmas when we were there. Uh, that is the only problem with shows. You spend a lot of money. Yeah. Because a lot of nice stuff. So you do a lot of shopping, which is an issue. But yeah, so I'm there buying this candle, minding my own business. And she says, oh, I really like, you know, your brand's so nice. Like, you know, I, I, I'm doing like PR. Like, a like, few of my clients would really like it. So she comes over with me and Pops is kind of looking at me like, what's going on? And I'm Jess thinking, was like, no, Jess goes to me, oh, this woman, she's a stylist and she wants to, we're going to give her some bits for free. Um, and she's gonna she's gonna give them to her customers, and we were like, cool. And the the woman came over and she goes, oh, um, I think Nicole's gonna be wearing this one, and we're like, who the hell is Nicole? So Nicole Scherzinger. Like, do you Nicole, know Nicole Scherzinger? We're like, Pussy cat dolls. We're like, <laughs> like really, yeah. Quite comfort- yeah, like, she's right, the dream. And actually, again, that didn't kind of materialize for a while. We so just we thought, thought she's had it over there. Right? Yeah, she's so, never really gonna, yeah, she's, she's never gonna move. wear it. And we got a phone call from one of our friends. I think it was Alex that saw yeah, it. Didn't she? she saw it first on on. The and Pussy Nicole Sh- Nicole Scherzinger was just wearing it on her Instagram live, talking on her live about 
can't remember. It was, yeah. I think React had just come out. Oh, yeah, React had just come out. Her so new song. She, yeah, so they were talking about that. She and there she is wearing it. our Assembler jumper. And that was, again, a, probably nearly a year later. Yeah. So we couldn't believe, we thought... There's so many things that have happened that we didn't kind of expect to... Everything we thought was going to be there and then has happened gradually as time's gone on. Yeah. I think the more, the busier we've been in doing so many other things, it's kind of like you throw enough things at the, at the wall and something's going to stick. And I think those kind of two things, the Lorraine show and, and Nicole Scherzinger wearing our stuff um, and having all these like really good influences, there's, there's so many things that you can do, but only certain things are actually going to work. Yeah. And there's, there's probably things that are going to be meant to be, which has been amazing we've had yeah, we've so been, yeah we've been lucky we've been very very lucky i think lucky but also we've had a, we've had our fair share we've had our fair share of things not go to plan haven't yeah we? so yeah lucky in some respects but yeah it's been it's been a long how long have we two two and a bit years now two years yeah two and a bit years yeah okay. crazy fair enough so um, like I said, we put out a QA. and a I'm going to pick, because yep. there's been quite a few that come out. I'm going to pick three. So the first yep. one is, what's the hardest thing about owning a fashion company? Gosh, you want to answer that? Yeah, well, I mean, I'd say the fact that so many people see fashion differently and what they like is very specific to them. So trying to find something that's going to work for everybody, which is much, when we're buying it's trying to make sure that one, the quality is going to be there and that it's going to be what people expect, but then also everyone's going to really like it, want to wear it, be fashionable. And it's also the kind of the fast fashion aspect of things is very difficult because trends are moving so, so quickly. I was going to say that it's when you obviously in the, in the buying calendar for fashion, what we buy, what we buy for Christmas, we start buying in like May. So you've kind of got to um, think about what kind of is going to be fashionable at that time and kind of knowing uh, things like colours, predicting predicting fashion trends way into, I mean, even sometimes in February, we'll be looking at what's going to be at the end of the year. So it's it's stuff like that. It's sizing. It's getting, it's finding stuff that you think is going to suit yeah, different yeah, people and, and, and it's that type we're, we're trying to obviously create something that's an investment so it's more timeless as well so people that trying to almost eliminate fast fashion to a degree obviously kind of staying on trends with colors etc but eliminating that fast fashion aspect because well we as a small business you can't keep up with like you know massive fast fashion i was gonna brand. say that, that there's so we buy things that are really high quality it's not about being just because it's you know fashionable at that time yeah. We don't want that kind of aspect. Yeah. We don't want to be having something that's going to be damaging the planet. Um, and be not popular in five minutes. So yeah. I think so that's a difficult one to, to yeah. overcome. Yeah. And and kind of also staying in that lane and not kind of being drifted over into, oh, well, that's, oh, well, that's nice. Like, well, maybe we should just get it and see if it, see if it works. And yeah. actually sticking to what. Staying loyal to kind of what, what we started we, yeah. out with. Yeah. And to that vision. And then, um, the next. Question number two, um, what's the biggest misconception people have about owning a fashion company? That's glamorous. <laughs> I'd say it's one of them. <laughs> yeah. Lugging those boxes to shows and all that kind of that element and like photo shoot days, what me and Poppy look like and what we're doing is so unglamorous. Yeah. I'd say that's definitely a misconception because we kind of thought it may be like Devil's Wear. Devil's Devil Wear's Prada. Prada. Maybe that like very vogue, very chic. Very like, chic. oh, we're just going to be, you know, we're going to be having yeah. a coffee and we'll just be, yeah. you know, sh- doing a photo shoot. Like, I think there is, there's so, I, I think with, ev- with any business, everyone's like, you know, it's more work than you think it is. And you're like, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Like, there's more work than you think it is. The brands that we work with are obviously in LA and New York and Columbia. They're on a completely different time schedule to us. So when we try and go to bed, we can't really go to bed because we're still interacting with those brands. Mm-hmm. So we work from like really in the morning all the way through the night. Um, and for me, like I know with your, you do the Facebook advertising, um, I'll sort of run social media. So it's creating posts and keeping those all the time, as well as doing our accounting, our marketing. Mm. It's only Jess and I. Yeah. If we had loads of people that work for us, Maybe it could be a bit more It could be a story. bit more devil as <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. But I think One it, day. I think it's so much nicer that we work just us because we know yeah. exactly what's going on. We know exactly what we're doing. And I suppose it's the old saying of if you want a job done right, do it yourself. Exactly. And so. I think we learned that very, very quickly. But yeah, it's 
not as glamorous, I'd say. And I think, and I, think I don't all, think I thought it was going to be glamorous. I, I think, did. did you? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be glamorous. I, I thought did. it's going to be a lot of hard work and it's going to be a yeah, lot of, but I think, still glamorous. Mm, I thought it's going to be a lot of sacrifice. And yeah. I think the misconception is that you're going to be, I think with any business that you think return is going to happen quickly. Almost, uh, quite, quite quickly. For us, return didn't happen for about a year. Mm. Um, we're now really, really lucky and really grateful, but now we've got a return on what we put into it and we're kind of reaping what we've sown yeah. now, which has been great. And yeah, it, it, return doesn't happen quickly, I would say. Yeah. That's, that was a big misconception for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then the very last one, because I want to know this, um, what, is, what is your dream brand to stock? Well, Good American was one of them. Yeah, good. So I was going to say, our, our, our biggest, biggest one, we are obsessed with the Kardashians. Mm, Absolutely <laughs> obsessed. I'd say a lot of women are. Like, yeah. we're, we we don't want to be, but we are because yeah, we, you, can't, can't be. you can't get away from it. They're everywhere. And Chloe yeah, in particular, well. yeah, she was like on our vision board at the very, very beginning, before we even started a center, before any anything, yeah. she was when on our we vision just board. We started kind of messing around with the idea of brands. Yeah. Good American was one of them. And when we reached out to Good American, we went to New York, we pitched our uh, assembler to Good American. And this was actually the second year. This so was we the had second our year. Yeah, so they could so see everything. More credibility at that point, which definitely helps. And they said yes. And we honestly, we walked out of them. We were like, Chloe Kardashian's brand. She only stocks in the UK in Selfridges, Harvey Nichols, and Harrods. So you think those are three? They're not small businesses. Extremely, Huge. They're extremely, extremely large scale. They are multi-million pound yeah, businesses. Like the, and the, the fourth one she wants to. to work with in the UK is me and Jess. Yeah. So we were like goosebumps, chills, Good crying, goodness. hysterical. I remember getting on the plane back from New York to it, like the UK and getting off the plane and telling like my mum and my dad being like, Chloe Kardashian's brand. It yeah. said yes. And we've signed a contract with them to stock yeah. with us. So that was, I would say that was our, that was like, our big moment. Tick, so done yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, because um, that's like the dream brands, one. brands that we want to work with, we've, we've got a few in mind. I don't want to jinx it because we're going to be reaching out to them quite soon. But, I'd say yeah, it's, it's it's just those those brands that we see, and there's a few in Australia, as we said, that we really. Do you want to like. say the one? Because I might say a different one, so then we said, <laughs> <laughs> and we, don't, we can't give two. We <laughs> can't give two away. But no, so yeah, so it's it's. I'd say, I mean, even something like Skims. I mean, Skims is in self just now. Skims, yeah, is Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian's um, brand of her. She does a lot of. She does gym wear, but also like, shape wear. Bras. So that would be a really, really amazing one to get because, again, that's really inclusive, making women feel confident, empowered. Yeah. I suppose. The and, brand, and, I think every brand that we reach out to, the whole thing has got to be right. It's yeah. got to be right for um, the size inclus inclusivity. It's got to be right for the fact that they've got a good ethos. Their mantra is like really nice. Um, it's got to be recyclable. There's so many things that we don't just go, oh, that's cool. I love what they're wearing. I'm going to yeah. want that. The whole brand as a whole has got to sit yeah. right with Jess and I, yeah. um, where they get their stuff from, the production um, of, you know, where these things are made. It's really important to us that these yeah. aren't things that are made in China um, and it's made in a really horrible way. These are things that we want to make sure is luxurious and start to finish. Yeah, it, isn't it? it's, it's, it's well made from start to finish. And I think even at some point we have discussed maybe doing some like our own line. Um, that's something that we'd be really interested in doing. I think because again, I think that would be our next biggest thing that we yeah, would do. Yeah, because we still want to stock these brands, and they're all international brands. That like we wouldn't stock a UK brand. We'd only stock things you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, it but, just um, makes it more. It just know, makes it kind of our, so much more special. Yeah. So they're all international brands, and I think that what we would probably do is maybe our, all of our stuff would be maybe made here. So yeah. and and we've we've done we've worn so many pairs of different leggings. I know exactly what I'd want. Might, Same. Yeah. yeah so we, we kind of know what we'd want to create and again not kind of um interfering with anything that our brand's already doing um but something that's just kind of our own and i think that's something that we would definitely like yeah. to do but that's that's a, a that's of, on the list that's that's far away that's not now that's <laughs> i not mean now. three year plan for that i think yeah, yeah something yeah. like that <laughs> okay so to finish off thanks for coming on and then where can everyone find you guys 
Yeah. So Ascendla on Instagram is uh, at Ascendla UK. And then our website is www.ascendla.co.uk. And it's pronounced Ascendla. We get so many people like, is it a Kenla? And we're like, no, it's like ass. Emla. <laughs> I won't lie to you. I was actually going through. Am I saying it right? That was actually something am I, I was right? doing. Yeah. Well, it's scary. I think it is a bit of a weird one. I mean, we still get people that say Givinci when it's yeah. Givenchy, so um, we don't yeah. mind. We don't mind. We can't. And also, it's kind of a talking point. Yeah. People don't yeah. know how to say it, and actually, it's, it's kind of a thing that the more you say it, it's, it's a sandler. Yeah, it's a it's sandler. It's a sandler. Well, yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So. Perfect. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. Thank you so much.